Hi everyone, this is Multi Craftsman. Some time ago, uh, Tom on Tom Technique on YouTube made this uh, stop. I think he said he was making it for his dad. See if I can zoom in on it here a little bit better. And this is my my version. It's basically his design, but uh, I had to modify it a little bit. As you see, my my rails are a little different than his. He, I think his was mostly flat. Mine's got a pretty high uh, raised area right there. And I did not follow the angle. I mean, I just I just cut it out. At the time I was making this, I did not have a uh, milling machine. Now I do have a milling machine, and I'm still not sure I would have the, the tooling uh, to cut that, but it hasn't made any difference. It, it works just fine the way it is. The only thing is, his this knob has graduation marks. Mine have none. And the reason mine has none is because uh, I don't have any type of indexer. So uh, it's going to probably be another month or two months before I can actually uh, afford to purchase one of those. Uh, so I didn't want it to, I never really needed the indexes. I mean, I don't really use it much. I use the, uh, the index that's on my... All right, where's my hand? I use the index marks that's on my carriage, and I'll move it to wherever I want it to be, and I usually just uh, uh, roll this, roll this stop out till it touches, and then that works fine. But it's sort of like an incomplete project. Uh, I don't have any indexes on there, so I'm going to try to put index marks on this thumb wheel. I'm taking the camera loose now so I can move it on over. I have figured out that there is, boy my hand did not hold very steady. Uh, I have figured out that uh, there's more ways to skin a cat than just the one way. So I have made me an indexer. Highly accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so, here is my indexer. <laughs> Let's see if I can get in on it. I have, uh, using uh, TurboCAD, I have drawn out a circle. Well, not big. Not very bright, not very clear, but, but anyway, uh, you can really see what's going on here. I drew out a, uh, a page on TurboCAD, put lines on it, printed it. Uh, couldn't ever seem to get it to print the right size, so I just printed it real big. I brought it out here and cut it out with a pair of scissors, and I had a piece of plastic, sort of about like a window pane, and I cut the plastic about the right size, bored a hole in it, brought it back here on the back. I had made a nut it was one of my first threading projects when I was learning how. It probably wasn't the first. It was probably a few down the line, but it was cutting internal threads, and I made it to fit on the back here. Um, I glued this piece of paper onto my plastic wheel, bored the hole out to fit this spindle. Uh, this little rod that was already there back to hold the side panel on that I don't ever seem to get around to putting on. Uh, made a little pointer and it's got the right amount of marks on it. I marked the ones for 10 to stand out. There's actually fives in the in between those. I probably won't stamp the fives. I'll probably just stamp the, the tens. Uh, and that's how I'm going to proceed to put my index mark on my wheels. There's a little bit of run out on this, but uh, 
but what I'm doing is not going to make any difference. And this was, this is a lot better than it was. I, I used my adjustment tool there to kind of knock it in. Uh, I had an indicator dial on the back side there. And it's about 10,000 to run out where I'm going to put the marks in that. And that's, that's good enough for me. Uh, not a real good focus, but uh, about as good as I'm going to do, I think. Uh, that's my scratching tool. Don't blame Tom for that one, because uh, he showed how to make a good one. Uh, <laughs> I did not follow instructions. I had a broken tap, and I figured that would just make a fantastic tool, so I used it. I'm going to use three different lengths of uh, index marks. I'm going to use uh, a long one for the tens, uh, a short one for the uh, it's probably going to be twos, and kind of an in-between mark there for fives. And this is where my longest one is coming out to. And I st still use my same stop here that I had. I just removed the. Uh, the rod and the the uh, radius piece, and I just laid the whole piece up and uh, tightened it down for a stop. This one here is uh, the longest one is going to be about three hundred thousandths. Okay, and and that's about where it will come to. So basically, this piece here, I'm just going to, I'm just going to turn it to one of my index marks on the back, and I'm going to use a carriage wheel to, to broach it, more or less, and use my little index wheel here to, to mark the pieces. Yeah. If I'd have had another piece sticking out, I'd have preferred it to be over here on this side, but uh, I'm using what I got. I could have made one, I guess. Uh, probably could have removed that screw there. That would have been a little bit better. Probably could have made a L-shaped one come over and come down. Probably would have been better, but uh, this is quick. It's easy. And it's a, also a trial. <laughs> this is the first time. It should work. Okay, we're going to see if we can't put an index or two on here. Okay, well the tens have been scribed. And now I'm getting ready to scribe the fives. get it where it will show up but it's not showing real good and that one looked like a little bit of diagonal yeah I found out that I need I need a uh, way to lock the chuck one of these you see a little bit of an angle here I saw my chuck roll just a little bit one time so I don't have a lock and I, I'm not gonna worry about it on this uh, dial here. I'll probably never use this dial, but this is just a, a learning process to, to see if I can index things this way. Uh, and I know now that I really need a way to, to lock it down. I'll come up with something if I ever need to actually do that. Okay, here's one of my learning things here. I, I just noticed that some of my, my little indexes were getting close together and some of them were further apart and that's no good but then I noticed that my my piece was actually moving on my mantle so that idea is not going to work so I took that 
uh, threaded right out and I clamped down on the knurl. They, they wasn't very good knurls anyway. This was one of my first knurling jobs. Eh, not the best in the world by any means. I practiced a few times. I got a little bit better with it. And um, this knurler that comes on this uh, thing here is really not a very good knurler. But anyway, I, I've, I've gotten better. I can make satisfactory knurls. But this one here is not one of them. Uh, but anyway, I didn't really want to mess them up, and then I don't think I will. Uh, I'm looking here for the chuck key to tighten it up. I think this one here will hold it uh, precise. It's not going to spin. Now all I have to do is worry about the chuck moving. So, uh, another thing I just learned. Oh, I didn't mention it, but when I put it back in here, of course I got to find a way to index it. So I move my cutter to one of my tens, and then I loosen my index plate here on the back, and I rotated it to one of my tens, and then I clamped it back down. So I'm thinking, and my thinker's not always working right, but uh, I'm thinking that I am back where I should be. Of course, it won't help these pieces that spaced in inaccurately. But it doesn't really matter. Like I said, I, I never use this and don't have any plans for ever using the index. I, I just want to uh, complete this project and create an indexer and uh, learn. I guess I'm learning some of the things not to do. Okay, this is my attempt to fix some of the problems that I encountered before. Now one thing I did not like my indexer being off to the side, I thought it would be better if it came straight down. So, I'm going to see if I cannot make it a little better. If I get the position just right, then I'm going to mark it, put a little glue on it, and my index pointer will come straight down. I like that better. Step number two. I cut a couple of thousands off of it, which erased all the screwed up marks. Okay, and number three was to lock the chuck or lock the spindle. And it's very difficult to make some kind of a lock, at least it is for me. But I notice that these gears here, if they're fully engaged here, and there's almost no space between them, but I made a little wooden shim and put in there, and I put a pair of vice grips on it. And now, basically, that spindle is locked. And this, I can lock it at any position. So, that should work. Well, we'll see if I've solved all the, the problems. I'm going to try to index it again. <clears throat> so now I got my index pointer and I got my spindle locked. I got a wooden, wooden shim between the gears. Uh, they clamped together. And now, uh, so far, this appears to be working good. Now I gotta change my depth, switching to fives.
Yeah, my camera died just as I was starting to make these small cuts, but I ran inside and plugged it up for a few minutes, and I'm going to make the last ones on the uh, on the video. Not sure if I made the full stroke on that one. Reaching around the camera, yeah, I think I did. So, this is really, really a lot different than it was doing it before. One might would think that it would take a little effort to to turn the wheel or to make that scribe, but it doesn't. As a matter of fact, uh, it's about the same uh, amount of effort to to turn it normally. Uh, so that should be that. Uh, back off from it now. And, oop, I take my lock off. Huh. That might work very well. Now, as you can see, that is much, much better than it was before. And it's this is actually perfect. I'm, I would actually be proud of this. <laughs> I, mean, I could show it off to somebody. The other one, I'd just stick it on and cover it up if anybody came into the shop and see it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I would like to show it off. Wow. So, let's see if I can get it back on there again. Now, I think I can take a wire brush and brush off the little curls here on the on the end, uh, they push up a curl on every one of these, and let's see. Uh, are you gonna focus? Probably not. Huh? Oh well. Someday I guess I'm gonna have to learn how to manual. Whoa, look at that, it focused. I have to learn how to use the manual focus on this thing. So, yeah, these marks are all perfect. Uh, I see nothing wrong with none of them. They're all straight, they're all evenly spaced. Uh, yeah, this is good. And this is the same one that I had screwed up before. I, I just put it in the lathe and turned it down. This would be a few thousand, just enough to, to cut the old marks off and put these new marks on there. So, man, it, it really looks nice. All right, I'm going to clean it up and uh, see if I can figure out a way to stamp numbers on there without messing it up entirely. So, uh, for, for Tom, thank you for making this project it was really interesting and I learned a lot uh, it doesn't matter how many times you screw things up if you learn to do it without screwing up that, that's the whole purpose everybody have a great day